Uh, is it down here? Here we go. So during the cur uh, the Curse of Strahd event at the shop today, one of my other players was drawing the events that were playing out uh, through her character uh, her character's eyes. Uh, she's playing Dax, who is an elven bard, and uh, and so here she kind of she drew Castle Ravenloft up on the mountain, and uh, just some some of the feelings. This was her trying to uh, draw the cart. Uh, there was a, a portion where they needed to pull a cart with various uh, things in the back. And also, uh, this is a part here. Uh, she f she was a little freaked out because uh, you go to a certain place, and someone talks from uh, someone talks to you from uh, beneath the floor, and that really kind of spooked her out. Um, and so this is the this is what the the floorboard person is saying, and uh, and this was Dax's reaction to <laughs> to that situation. So it's fun, and you know these are quick sketches that are made during you know during the course. Hopefully all of you out there, uh, I mean, we've seen, you don't have to have, you know, you don't need to spend a hundred hours to make, you know, super complex artwork for your, for your uh, role play sessions. You know, there's a pen and a little imagination going from there, but I wanted to give uh, my player here uh, some recognition for the work that she put into her character and just sketching out what has been played out in the campaign so far in the module, I guess, technically. <laughs> So, lots of fun stuff. There's some table talk going on. Oh, this is the blue box. This is what you're talking about. And that's the, yeah. See, but I, I thought the I thought the red box was based on uh, what was going on here. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I missed a couple things here. Uh, oh, you got a tux uh, looking, uh, looking for another one. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, well, mine, my tux, I don't know if she's down here right now. Um, I have my, I have my tabby. He's a big fat slug. Like he's just a big fuzzy slug. Uh, he's sleeping down on the side there. He might wake up and all of the cats have been on stream. You'll see them eventually. <laughs> uh, Shadzar saying the blue box is trash. John Eric Holmes, a psychology professor, has the ability to write an RPG because he has a PhD. Quote, red is not one, but two. You have red box that is Moldavate Cook or BX. And you have a red box that's uh, Metzner or B-E-C-M-I. Oh, speaking of the talks, hi, Sophie. Yeah, you want to come up? Come on. Hi. Uh, Holmes Edition is touted as trash by most people because you can't really have D&D &D in just a single 24-page book. There's a difference between red and blue. Oh, yeah, I have the Discord up there. Rule Cyclopedia is the best version of Red because it was uh, Beck Me without... I don't know what that stands for. But all of you are getting D&D &D history from Shadzar and Bubonic as we kind of get maybe into some sort of edition war. <laughs> That's perfectly fine, though. <laughs> oh, are you going to be shy? Maybe so. I don't know. We'll see her when we see her. Uh, okay. So what I wanted to talk about, uh, certainly what you all are talking about takes precedence. Answering questions, sharing in stories. Uh, you all are here uh, for the live experience of Twitch and uh, and to share our, our woes, you know, our triumphs, to ask questions, to share our artwork and go from there. Tycho three suddenly Tycho throws opens the door throws a grenade in the room shuts it and runs away. <laughs> it's okay, Tycho. We all know that it's fourth edition. <laughs> Check Discord says uh, Bubonic. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Here I'll I'll put this up real quick. Arr. By the way, that's the tabby. Last night he was being a he was being a, a big cuddle buddy. Oh, nice. Yeah, Ralph Partha minis. I'm going to talk about some classic stuff, right? There we go. <laughs> Blasphemy. Ree! Fourth edition. Ree! <laughs> yes. Uh, all the screeching over fourth edition. <laughs> I liked it. The math was nice and elegant. It allowed for scaling. It intrinsically had epic level shenanigans inside of it. 
uh, without needing splat books, despite them making splat books after the fact. But whatever, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. King says your phylactery is one of my cats. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> oh, I wonder which one it could be then. If you're wise, if you're wise, you're gonna put it in the calico, because she cannot be caught. She's the athletic, sporty one, so full of energy. She likes attention, but she doesn't really like being pet. Unless she's sleepy, and then you kind of... She's like, what? Huh? Okay, you can pet me. And then when she comes to her senses, she's like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Human contact? I'm out of here. <clears throat> this is the easiest way to define the additions. Just right-click and choose Save Snapshot. Move on. I, I didn't hate 4th edition, but wasn't pleased with the 30 cap yourself. What would you have wanted, Bubonic? Like <laughs> going up to fifty or something? I uh, what's uh what 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 would have been your ideal for fourth edition? You never played anything above three five, but you just really enjoy three five. Give me a lot of good ways to poke around. Oh yeah, three five has a ton of options, Tycho. Uh, there's a lot of content, uh, official and especially in the splat books, like third party splat books. You could play forever in that sandbox, and you'll you'll ne you will not get bored. You know, you wish all that stuff in Dragon Quest box was still intact. Would love to have a blast from the past. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I might have some old stuff at the store. Uh, th there's that deck master uh, that I posted in the Discord channel. I might have some old stuff in the basement. I don't think I have any of the old stuff of my brother's. Um, I don't even know if he still has that old first or second edition stuff either. I'll put this over here. The character himself uh, that we just generated isn't as important for what we're doing right now. The characters will be, but what I wanted to go over, uh, aside from the chat that's really, that we're having an awesome co uh, conversation... But what I wanted to go over, too, are some of the details about characters as PCs that we might overlook. And even as a DM, uh, many times, is this really going to come up? Maybe, maybe not. Though it doesn't hurt to know, and especially on a sheet like this, where you, you see, am I encumbered? Am I heavily encumbered? What's my carrying capacity? We've never really explored this before. Well, if you're a wizard with a strength of eight, Nodwick you are not. And if you understand my reference to Nodwick, then yeah... Congratulations to you. In other words, you just aren't a you aren't a pack mule. You can only carry so much stuff. You can only jump so far, uh, or so high. <laughs> and in the end, it didn't even matter. Uh, some of this stuff you already know. Here's our ability scores and modifiers. You've seen us do this a lot, right? You know, ten or eleven is a zero. Twelve, thirteen is a one. This this should be bread and butter. Uh, and if it's not for any of you who are out there, if you're lurking, if it's you're a first timer. Something along those lines. Stop me and let me know, and I'll exp I'll get into it and explain it more. Yeah, Nodwick. <laughs> Sounds like Bubonic just had a <laughs> had epiphany. <laughs> uh, advantage and disadvantage. Uh, this is in fifth edition. Rolling two dice and keeping the highest or lowest. This is this is easy stuff here. <laughs> Um, we are going to go down to strength. Uh, you can read in the PHB, there are parts that will describe uh, skills in depth, where you could use various skills so that you don't have to be prompted by your DM. And you can offer, oh, hey, uh, can I use my strength for this purpose? Or something along those lines. Uh, what you will find in strength are things for lifting and carrying. Because, hey, you raid a dungeon. How much stuff can you haul out of it if you want to resell it? Um, or one of you, uh, one of you uh, here, like Spicy Larry, are you going to go down? No, Spicy Larry lives. Well, let's say Spicy Larry uh, was killed by the bandit gang and left in the middle of the road. And we walk up to him, and who's going to fireman carry his corpse back to the local you know, church to get rezzed? And... Um, how much does he weigh? Well, does that over-encumber you? Uh, what happens in those situations? 
Yes, Spicy Larry attains victory, and in so doing, you get 125 EXP. Congrats. <laughs> Dark Wolf. In more of a wormy than Nodwick. And Shadzar's uh, shooting the pew-pew the winky lasers at us. So we'll take our character here. Uh, he, Alright, so he has a strength of 12. We'll, we'll use the one that we just generated, right? Your strength score determines the amount of weight you can bear. The following terms define what you can lift or carry. Your carrying capacity. Your carrying capacity is your strength score multiplied by 15. This is the weight in pounds that you can carry, which is high enough that most characters don't usually have to worry about it. You can also push, drag, or lift. You can push, drag, or lift a weight in pounds up to twice your carrying capacity. While pushing or dragging weight in excess of your carrying capacity, your speed drops to 5. If you want to equate this to video games, think of maybe Ocarina of Time, right? He's pushing those heavy boulders. Ooh! Ooh, and it's, he's only getting a couple inches at a time. His speed is reduced because he's pushing things along. But it's, it is easier to push on the ground or things along the, you know, like that, especially if you have wheels on a wagon, uh, than it is to just hook and carry it around yourself. And your size... <clears throat> pardon me, my voice cracked. I better drink some more tea. Your size and strength is also important in this equation. Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. No, uh, Larry. I, so I, I don't have uh, I don't have those dice generators in the channel. I can add stuff like that later, but it hasn't really been something that's come up yet. Yeah, it's D one hundred and either one D twenty or two D twenty. Uh, size and strength. Larger creatures can bear more weight, whereas tiny creatures can carry less. For each size category above medium, double the creature's carrying capacity. Which, by the way, that makes the enlarge and reduce spell also very useful. Um, you know, if you hit someone with that, suddenly your wizard can be a pack mule for a little bit. Or if you hit someone with that, uh, suddenly you might have actually just made them sort of like fall over and you've stopped them in their tracks. Someone tries to get away, you know, with a, a, a big haul or a backpack of yours. You know, you hit them with a reduced spell or something along those lines and they, you reduce their size and they can't get away anymore because they're, weight, they're weighted down. <clears throat> Now, there is a variant where we have encumbrance. The rules for lifting and carrying are intentionally simple. Here's a variant if you're looking for a more detailed rule, uh, rule set for determining how a character is hindered by the weight of equipment. When you use this variant, ignore the strength column of the armor table in Chapter 5. If you carry weight in excess of 5 times your strength score, you are encumbered, which means your speed drops by 10 feet. If you carry weight in excess of 10 times your strength score, your maximum carrying capacity, uh, you are instead heavily encumbered, which means your speed drops by 20 feet, and you have disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws that use strength decks or con, right? Because you have this, oh, heavy backpack, and you're trudging, and you're just traveling so slow because you're straining, and if someone shoots a fireball at you, you're probably not going to dodge out of the way too easily. Um... So it's important when you're sitting down for your game, is it super important? Not necessarily, but you should want to talk to your, uh, to your DM about, about this. Is this going to be relevant for our game? Is this something you want us to monitor? Is this something that you want to monitor? Where do you go from there? When she on the facts of life, I, I don't know. I don't know. Shads are, <laughs> The uh, the theme song to it is is kind of playing out in my head. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't sing it verbatim, but uh, you know, facts of life, the facts of life. As you, you take the up, you take the down, you take the something all around, and what do you get? The facts of life, the facts of life. <laughs> all right, yeah, come on, everyone, you got to answer Shadzar. Who preferred Joe to Blair? <laughs> uh, so we look down here. And you can see that there's a weight column, right? And even if you go back to Chapter 5 Equipment, like here's Chapter 7, we'll come back here. Uh, if, you, if you look here, weight, 8 pounds, 10 pounds, 13 pounds. 
Heavy armor, plate mail is 65 pounds. And don't forget, here's some strength uh, minimums. And remember, the one variant said you don't have to worry about that necessarily. So by default, you're using the that first method. Um, but you need to take this into account if you're wearing this uh, this kind of heavy armor. You know, you start with chain mail. Of your limit, you're at 55 pounds. Now, for a monk, they don't have to worry about that. They don't wear armor. They use their decks and their wisdom. Uh, scroll down. There we go. So our carrying capacity here is uh, 15 times our strength score. So that is going to give us uh, 15 times 12. Sorry, let me... Uh, so we have 0, carry the 1, 3, and then we're adding 0, 5, and 1. So 180 pounds. Sorry, I probably should have been able to do that more quickly in my head. Um, but we can come down here, and we say that the carrying capacity is 180 pounds. <laughs> Spicy nervously looks around because he doesn't understand the reference. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Spicy. Mmm, yeah, that thing. Smile and nod, smile and nod. <laughs> Did you ever see Family Guy where Peter Griffith turned into, uh, uh, well, very large. I, I mean, even if it's a Family Guy reference, Shad's are, it's, uh, at least for me, it's, woo. Sorry. <laughs> There may be others here who uh, who have uh, seen Family Guy or Facts of Life uh, themselves and are, are getting that a little bit more directly. Though I won't discourage you from still bringing that uh, that kind of thing up. Uh, so now, if, if we're to weigh all this, like whatever, scroll case, a winter blanket, he's nowhere near his, uh, his carrying capacity. But let's say for whatever reason he decides to lug around three sets of full plate armor. Well, then we can note that he's encumbered, or he's heavily encumbered, as per the rules. Then you can you can go on and do things like uh, sleight of hand or stealth if you were, if you're curious about what you can do with decks. Here's our constitution because it does it it does come into play even though it doesn't seem like it for skills right here. Um, by the way, hiding has its own set of rules, and we can get into that sort of stuff too. Speed. This is something that also comes up, right? We have our run speed that we've been filling up here. This is your normal speed. Uh, most characters start at 30 unless you're small or a dwarf, and then you start at 25. If you are climbing or swimming... Here, let me go to... Uh, it's effectively a two-for-one. It would have your movement. We could fill in here that he has a climb speed of 20 and he has a swim speed of 20. Because that's that's cutting his movement in half, and of course, if we were to cast a spell that changed that, uh, I don't know, we we give him, uh, I forget the spell that would do it, um, or let's say that we give him a fly speed of sixty from a spell, then we can come in and put that in there itself. But moving through difficult terrain, if you're climbing or swimming and you don't have those as uh, intrinsic methods of movement, then it's going to be half of your regular movement. You're only, you're only climbing one foot for every two feet you could normally move. But I said 2D20, a.k.a. Tutty 20. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. I get it now, Shay. I, I know it, it always kind of sucks when you have to explain the punchline to, uh, to a joke. I appreciate you doing that uh, in this case, but uh, I get what you're, what you're going for. Can we give him the pants of Aquaman to make him swim at the speed of Aquaman? <laughs> uh, Bubonic wants the link for things. We can do this. That's the character sheet. I put it in Discord, uh, Bubonic, and I'll I'll put it here too. This is the this is the newer sheet uh, that we're using, the modified sheet.
that you can use to fill this out. Uh, then we get into, again, things that aren't always brought up in a modular campaign, forced marching, uh, mounts and vehicles for short uh, spans of time, up to an hour, many animals move much faster than humanoids. And so we get into these more obscure rules. We do a lot of just basic D&D 101 stuff on these character sheets. We haven't really ever gone over overland travel, you know, traveling over days, uh, traveling, uh, like taking uh, shifts during watches. A lot of kind of the, it's not really hard, it's just the next level of detail in D&D. But a lot of this, in using ability scores uh, in Chapter 7, this is what we're getting into, is a little bit more of the realistic... I know it's sort of weird saying realistic fantasy games, but the realistic aspects. Because, let's face it, if you made your dump stat strength, you're not going to be able to haul a bunch of stuff. Um, travel paces. So, uh, this will tell you how to interact with difficult terrain. Now, there are some special types of movement that you can take. Climbing, swimming, and crawling. While well, climbing uh, or swimming, each foot of movement costs one extra foot. So, t uh, in two feet in difficult terrain. So, in this case, um, he would go down to ten feet if he was crawling through difficult terrain. And that would be a full movement for him. Dark Wolf unflips table, I think. Uh, I think I get the responsible swishing now. <laughs> Shadzar Aquaman has one skill and no pants. He could talk to fish. Hey, he had a trident, didn't he? You want to hear about Creel, talk to a fish. <laughs> uh, at the DM's option, climbing a slippery vertical surface or one with few handholds requires a successful strength athletics check. Similarly, gaining any distance in rough water might require a successful strength athletics check. Uh, in order to... Like, if it's a still pond, you can probably tread water unless there's a special circumstance. But if you want to swim against the river or do something specific then we'll be calling out for athletics. That's why taking athletics as a proficiency isn't necessarily a bad thing. That can help you be more mobile. Jumping. Your strength determines how far you can jump. You, we, and there's two types of jumping. You have long jumping, and then you have high jumping. So think like the Olympics event, and then think like NBA shooting, right? When you make a long jump, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. Um, so what that is telling you is if you have 10 feet of movement, this character can, uh, can run 10 feet and then just naturally jump 12 feet because that is his strength score. And so he can move 22 feet of his 40 and you, unless there's a special circumstance, there's nothing necessarily that would be holding him back. Uh, when you make a standing long jump, you can leap only half that distance. Either way, each foot you clear on the jump costs a foot of movement. So if he's just standing on a ledge and he needs to jump over a five-foot gap, he can do that, right? If, even if he doesn't have a running start. Because we take half of his strength score, which is six, he can just, from a standing point, go whoo! Or uh, if this is Barbarians from Diablo, whoo, <laughs> and jump six feet from a standstill, or 12 feet if he has a 10-foot head start already. Uh, not like you are in stream or water, there's a reason for a check. Spicy Larry's going to the forest. You're attacking with disadvantage, nine and a seven, but you get a plus two. Oh, just, yo, know, Spicy Larry falls short and gets squished by a treant pair. Yeah, you were close, Spicy. So this is something to consider. Do you have a strong character? If so, you get these... They really have tried to make it simple while still based on somewhat realistic expectations. If you have a strong character, you can jump further. But let's say for whatever reason, your movement speed was 10. And you can jump 18 feet, right? You have a really high strength. You can only move up to your your movement speed that's available to you. So you could still only jump 10 feet, even though you could jump 18 feet. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, and it, it gives some, um, it gives some uh, modifiers. Like if you're trying to make a long jump, but there's uh, like a bump or you got to jump over some little obstacle... Uh, if you want to clear a low obstacle, a DC 10 strength check, something along those lines. If you're landing in difficult terrain, uh, uh, dexterity acrobatics to land on your feet. Otherwise, you land prone, right? So you might see that if you 
if you remember any like high school or college uh, track and field, they'll do a long jump and some people will then just sort of like boop, fall back on their butts in the sand pit uh, because they didn't balance correctly. They, they didn't ah, land the, the, the they didn't stick the landing. That's what the acrobatics can come into play for. Now, there's also high jumps. When you make a high jump, you leap into the air a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. When you make a standing high jump, you can jump only half that distance. So here, here's our modifier. If if he takes a 10 foot, you know, da -da 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 -da, 10 feet, he can then jump up high four feet, right? Three plus his strength modifier. If he's just standing still and he goes, Hoo! and he's a little halfling, right? Uh, he can jump two feet. That's half. Hopefully this is making sense. Again, this stuff doesn't always come up, but if we're considering options, battlefield awareness, uh, different st uh, strategies on the field of combat or trying to solve a riddle, doing some Tomb Raider stuff, you know, clinging to ledges and, you know, kind of going along there, running, climbing, jumping, landing, all this stuff. These are a set of rules that are good to keep in mind as a player, let alone as a DM, especially if you want to, if you want to give a physical challenge, huh, we'll invoke Double Dare. If you want to give a physical challenge and not just a mental one or a skill challenge to your players, you can create a parkour puzzle. You can create some sort of a jumping puzzle, um, lifting and moving. Think of some dungeons from um, uh, Breath of the Wild. Actually, uh, uh, Dark Wolf was talking about one a couple nights ago. Um, there are dungeons that have f uh, physical challenges that must be overcome. You know, there's a very classic piece of D&D &D art where there's a rogue that is trying to steal a gem out of an idol's eye. How do, you, how do you get up there? What are you doing? There we go. Uh, so really, it's, it's these kinds of details that, uh, that I wanted to bring up. And there's a couple more for this segment, too. I'm not quite done with it, but this is, it's, this is meant to just have you consider what's that next step? What else can I do with my abilities? What does wisdom really entail? What is it really coming across instead of just being fuel for a specific outlet in a, in a skill? Spicy will return shortly. Hey, come back when you can, man. It's uh, it's fun having you in here. I really appreciate you participating. Do what you got to do. Uh, Desmar says, are there any racial bonuses to jump? Like I imagine an elf jumping further than a dwarf or a halfling with the same strength. Uh, that would be a custom rule that you could talk with your DM, but no, this is based on strength scores. So we come over here, and let's go to Guido Moric. He has an 18 strength, and his modifier is 4. So he's going to get a nice long jump if he gets a, or a, a high jump of 7 feet, um, and it, uh, or 3 feet, because we're, we're rounding down here if he's standing still. And he can just jump 18 feet without really having to do anything special unless there's obstacles or something in the way. So in this case, it's it's not even an elf that's getting a longer distance because this is based on... Well, you can't see me doing I'm you know, I'm hitting my legs. This is based on your strength as a character. Now, you can roll an elf, like an elf fighter or something. Heck, even a monk. Monks can use strength for things, too. Um, you can roll a... Uh, you can roll a strength any race, and that's where the power to jump up or lengthwise will come. There are a couple. There are a couple things that we'll get into that can that can also uh, modify that Desmar. Uh, Bubonic says, "Jump up to get out a ten foot pit. Uh, a ten foot pit. Bring me a rope. Yeah, might play more Breath of the Wild today." Dark Wolf says. Uh, and uh, I, oh, so Ah uh, can jump better. Yeah. Uh, intrinsically she can. Now you have magic as a druid, Dark Wolf, and so you might be able to use your vine whip creatively or some other things along those lines. But of pure natural ability, Ah will be able to jump better than you will if her strength score and thereby modifier is larger than yours. Um, now, something to keep in mind too, we want to talk about basketball, right? Because we have high jump. You can extend your arms half your height above yourself during the jump. Thus, you can reach above you a distance equal to the height of the jump plus one and a half times your height. Because when they're, you know, they're measuring this, um, this is why things like having a character height can be important. Do you want to jump out of a 10-foot pit? Can you do that? If you're at the bottom of a 10-foot pit, here we have a 5'11 person, right? He has a high strength. 
And so he may not be able to get the distance, uh, the, the 10 feet of movement before he actually jumps. Um, but, uh, so that's going to mean that he can high jump uh, seven. So he can high jump three feet normally, and then he gets one and a half times his height. So he's, let's just call him six foot. If he gets one and a half, that is, uh, that's nine feet. And so he is kind of like a basketball player, right? Um, so we get uh, three. So he, uh, his, the top of his fingers here, right? He can reach. This doesn't mean his feet are clearing 12 feet off the ground. This means at full arm's length with a full jump, you know, and no failures on, on anything or anything else that the DM will ask for. Guido Morik can put his fingers, he can touch 12 feet. I'm reaching way up off here. He can reach 12 feet, meaning that uh, if he falls in a 10 foot pit, he can just go whoo and jump and, you know, grab onto the ledge and most likely be able to pull himself up, uh, pull himself up out of the ledge. Now we come over to, um, yeah, we gave her, uh, we, we gave, uh, Salen, uh, a decent strength. I don't think we have anyone that's had strength as a dump stat yet. Yeah, especially not uh, Kaiser uh, Gullion. Hmm, pardon. I know we were going to think about the monk, and I said, nah, Charisma is probably going to be the dump stat for him instead. But let's say that Selin falls into the same pit. Uh, she doesn't have a running start, so we're getting, right, 3 plus 1 is 4. We have to divide that in half. So she can get 2 feet high jump standing, and then she gets 1.5 times. Now, she's not quite as tall. She's 5 foot, so let's say... Uh, she can get seven and a seven and a half feet. Uh, so she can get nine and a half feet from a standing high jump. That is not going to be enough. Like Salen, if she's at the bottom of a ten foot pit, that's not going to be high enough. Unless I don't know, the DM says roll something. You know, if it's a couple inches, it might be DM fiat, or your DM might be a hard line. Or no, I'm counting inches in this um, because we're still using the imperial system and not the metric system. <laughs> um, but uh, in this instance, Selin isn't going to be able to get the top of the pit with her with her fingers. Hopefully, this is making sense. If you need me to repeat anything or do other examples, make sure to let me know. Um, but as Bubonic uh, has uh, has pointed out, bring a rope. <laughs> Always have a rope as an adventurer. <laughs> Even if you're gonna go meet the king and you have to be dressed in finery, carry rope. <laughs> I mean, you probably shouldn't, but you should, really. <laughs> um, you're now picturing your DM giving you a negative for your heavy build and armor. Well, see that that could come into uh, that could come into play. Um, you know, if we're if you're facing something like encumbrance or whatnot. But in fifth edition, they've really tried to streamline. Uh, they've they've tried to streamline the system. So your armor has weight, but if it's within your if it's within your score, and I'm kind of I gotta be careful where I'm reaching here because you're you're not seeing. If it is within your score's ability to just cut uh, to wear, and it's a part of what you can, it's a part of you, right? You you have the strength. It's it's an exoskeleton you're wearing on yourself. There's not, and the only uh, how do I want to put this? Armor really only affects stealth in fifth edition. Your DM might rule differently for circumstances. Your DM might rule differently for certain conditions, or your DM might just say, no, 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 for whatever reason, I'm saying that when, when I'm playing our game, if you're wearing heavy armor, I'm going to reduce your jumping even further. Well, if you all make a social contract and you agree to it, there you go. But by the rules, uh, this is something that, you know, you have to consider. Soraya is six foot one, so I don't think uh, Kitty on Paper has considered Oz height yet. Uh, Bubonic says the dog wants up in your face to see the screen. Hi, doggo. Hello. Or if you're a pupper, actually, because Bubonic said that you have a you have a mini dachshund. Um, so doggo, pupper, uh, pupperino, whatever you want to be known as. <laughs> Hello. Uh, someone could reach down and catch your arm. That is true, Dark Wolf. So if someone's at the top and they have a reach. You know, just think of your own dimensions. You know, based on on your own proportions or on someone that you know. You know, so this will give you an extra sense of, of maybe a, a boost, right? 
interestingly enough, like know <laughs> know thyself. Um, the area from the crook of your elbow to your wrist. For most people, this is how big your foot is. You know, I'm not trying to troll you. If you want to check it at home, look, I don't have a camera on you. You can look silly if you want doing it. But your foot, like the heel of your foot, should start here at the crook of your elbow. And your your big toe will end at your wrist. It just, I don't know, it's an artistic, uh, you know, to remember proportions or to check that out. Or, you know, to see if you're a horrible mutant. <laughs> just... <laughs> Uh, Tycho says, another thing you should always bring is a bucket and a mirror that fits in your hand. People always ask why I have those things and rope on my rogue, and I'm just like, just wait, you'll see, this is useful stuff. Yeah, a little a little steel mirror is really good for looking around corners discreetly, or if you want to try and blind someone on a, in a sunny situation. Um, buckets can be useful too, but, you know, how portable or quiet are they? Mm, things along those lines. But now we're really getting into specifics of characters and campaigns and situations. But I do agree, Tycho. Um, that might make a, a good, um, some good content for a, a stream as well. We can have a conversation about essential gear for your, uh, for your, uh, your adventurer, and maybe alternative ways to consider using it. Uh, Bubon. Okay, so we'll call your dog Rex. Peru says a burlap sack is also a must. They are cheap and hold uh, little and gross things as well. Oh, <laughs> uh, does your does your flim flam cleric uh, haul stuff around in uh, in his burlap sack, Peru? Derek says I'm a horrible mutant, fifteen foot wood pole I like gnomes. <laughs> Little rope in a bucket. I hear the makings of a, a trebuchet. <laughs> Yes, it's it's a it's a man portable trebuchet. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um. Oh, by the way, there's also fun stuff that can come up in situations. What happens when you fall? Especially, right? We have a monk, and you get slow fall. Yay! This is eliminating a lot of this movement and other things that you have. Monks are really good for that. Uh, rogues can be too. Suffocating. A creature can hold its breath for a number of minutes equal to 1 plus its constitution modifier. Minimum 30 seconds. When a creature runs out of breath, it can survive for a number of rounds equal to its constitution modifier. At the start of its next turn, it drops to 0 hit points and is dying. You don't you don't take portions of hit point damage. That's it. You got as much time as you got. As a DM, do you want to put a challenge, a physical challenge? Make a water temple. Make having to go underneath water, going through caves or tunnels, make a puzzle where, you know, they might have to hold their breath or something along those lines. Um, that could be really scary. You know, think, um, think, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, there's a portion of the game like that. Resident Evil Revelations has a, a portion like that. I think Tomb Raider, some of the Tomb Raider games. Um, heck, Sonic the Hedgehog has a breathing mechanic. <laughs> I mean, don't we all? <laughs> I wonder if my paladin is smart enough to make a trebuchet. It doesn't look like it. 10 and a 12. Eh, you might stumble into it or find some plans. You know, 10, uh, 10 to 12 is, you know, average, slightly above average. What's their intelligence and wisdom? Oh, uh, 10 and 12. Okay, that's answering that. Bubonic shivers. Uh, does, does uh, like, like, breathing underwater stuff, uh, like suffocation or drowning kind of... Like, if any of this is, like, a, a super creepy or sensitive topic to any of you all, let me know. I'm not trying to, to do that to you, but I know some people just have really strong emotions about, you know, like, claustrophobic situations or whatever. Uh, Tycho says, I've actually used a bucket and some rope to get out of a couple situations. Scaled a wall with those two objects. I've saved someone's life with a bucket at the end of a slick rope. I, I'd love to hear that story, Tycho, honestly. Uh, Desmarsama, I'd be better off using the bucket as a mace or something with my 17 strength. Yes, you are El Kabong. Kabong. It's not a guitar, but Kabong. Uh, vision and light. But what I wanted to show you was, because the internet is a thing, as are nerds, as are all manner of, uh, of geeks and people who work together, wouldn't you know it, you can find a calculator for jumping under specific uh, circumstances. So we can fill in some details. Uh, here, let's, let's make this not as big. 
We'll move that over here. Okay. We'll use um, we'll use uh, Guido here. All right. So Guido Morik, what's our strength score? We have an 18 strength score. And how tall are we? He is five foot, eleven inches. And he's not a barbarian with totem spirit tiger. He's not a fighter, champion, remarkable athlete. Uh, this is not a monk with step of the wind, but that will come into play, and I'll show you. He is a rogue, but he doesn't have second story work. He's an assassin. He is not under the the. Uh, spell of jump, nor have the athlete feet, nor the boots of striding and springing. So, here we go. Your long jump is 18 feet horizontally with a running start. Your high jump is 7 feet off the ground, and you can reach up and grab something that is uh, almost uh, 16 feet off the ground. Without a running start, here we go. Bada boom, bada boom, and there's the 12 feet that we calculated before, because remember, he didn't have a running start when he was in the pit. He was just in the bottom of a pit. If there's obstacles in the way, you might need to make an athletics check to jump over them, and you cannot jump over any obstacles that are taller than four and a half feet. Uh, you know, you want to. We, th we think of dog shows, like dog or pony shows, and they jump over as they go through the course, the little hedges or hoops or things like that. Um, so. If there's an obstacle there, then in a uh, then in a long jump situation, um, that this is what he can clear. If you land in difficult terrain, uh, you might need to make a dexterity. And in all circumstances, you cannot jump farther than your remaining movement. You might need to dash to cover long distances. Your DM might allow you to push beyond your limits with a strength athletics check. Something to consider. And if you're a very good PC and you're paying attention in the game and you're being very creative, many DCs will allow you to push past your uh, push past your limits. Uh, King says, "I'm not trying to terrify you, though I am. Embrace the briny silence of the depths." Yeah, so this is King, even though I'm narrating. The abyss screams your name as you turn to salt. <laughs> Bobicus, oh hey, sup, King. <laughs> Just shouting at people to drown. <laughs> I fought some giants. My character went down for the first time to, uh, today. I'm going to give him a scar on his chest. Oh, okay, so you still haven't lost a character. Uh, what? Uh, so what's the scar? What uh, What impacted you um, in order to, to bring you down? Uh, Derek says, uh, Hey, my thoughts on these assassins that do everything but try to hide the fact they're assassins. I'm usually questioning how they live through their f uh, the first job. Um... Are you so, Derek? Are, are you bringing this up in reference to the character that we have up here? Because um, if so, we, we can explain it. Because he's not really an assassin, and when I, I can explain that further if if you needed that clarified. Bobby says no, he's fine. Not a very combat-oriented game. I've got down once from level two to five. Milestone leveling, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, oh, Peru asks a very good question. Is he scared of giants now? Like a little shaky in his left arm when the when they're mentioned. Uh, Tycho, well, I was running a doppelganger rogue, and I had a pretty high strength score. Threw the bucket and rope over a wall. It just happened to be a castle wall. I was trying to get out because I snuck in and stole a couple choice shiny objects and some nice treasure. Well, my character is too heavy to scale the rope while normal-sized, but then I turned into a gnome. Reducing my weight, but retaining my massive amount of strength because I was a doppelganger. Climbed that wall like it was nothing. Got out with a total value of 4,000 gold. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing with that. Yeah, 3-5 kind of allows you to do some very interesting things. And he's already got terrifying memories of necromancers. Oh, <laughs> so giants are nothing compared to whatever the necromancers put you through, Bobicus. Uh, I, I do kind of want to know. Uh, I'll make you relive those horrible, <laughs> those horrible moments. Uh, Delcorin's going through a random dungeon, and do you do it 15 and 18? Oh, easy. Look at this. Delcorin, the, the dwarven, the male dwarven wizard, just goes into a dungeon and, and says nay. <laughs> and you get 200 EXP for it. Uh, so for this character, King, or not, uh, it wasn't King, I'm sorry, it was Derek. He is a rogue assassin, but he's not, he's not an assassin in the sense that he is hired to go out and kill people with his personality and the things that he's experienced. Um, he's an assassin in so much that the mechanics allow him to get bonuses if he's acting first. And so he acts first in a situation. He wants control of the situation because he knows that uh, the, a position of strength 
is optimal. And so he is a preemptive attacker. He is someone who, if he sees something happening, he might be a catalyst for it and act before ever, everything else. So he's not a hired assassin in those terms. Uh, he is a soldier. He is a blacksmith. Though through his experiences, and especially with how he escaped from his POW camp, he learned the value that acting first is very important to do. And you'll get an advantage in combat for it. So, you know, having assassin as this word itself does not describe the character very well. Hopefully that makes sense, Derek. If not, I could try and clarify it a little further in some specific way that, uh, that you may yet need. Belcorn. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so there is a there is a small chance that you will win EXP enough in order to be back in the game where you're at. Uh, so it's not just total loss or total win. There is a halfway ground as well. Okay, I, I'm I'm oh, wait. So I I think sorry, my mind was all over. It it does make sense, and you're you're fine with that explanation, Derek, or. It does in that you need further explanation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to remember, I'm also on a 10 second delay. No, that's that, that's fine, Derek. I, I thought you were just sort of playing along. I, I'm I'm on a 10 second delay from when I see it in chat and when you get my reaction, and so I may have already uh, had commentary or I put out I put out two branches, and then when you say yes uh, and I like I see yes after the 10 second delay, I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's going on? So I'm live. I'm just not too live. Uh, with the same doppelganger, we ended up in a hole, my party and I, to get out of this hole. There was a rope, but the rope was slicked with grease. Well, I was a doppelganger, so I just sort of changed into a gargoyle and avoided the rope. And, uh, oh, and Bobakus is sharing some backstory, too. Everyone, everyone, get your get your rocking chairs up and pull them around the fire, because Uncle Bobakus is telling us some cool stuff. No, that's fine, Derek. You're illustrating... Uh, oh, no, how horrible. You're trying to, to uh, be a part of the community and, and draw something that randomly happened because you felt inspired? Ugh. <laughs> Unfollow. Unsubscribe. What am I even doing here? <laughs> Bubonic. Uh, Blue Dragons are lawful evil. Uh, I, I don't know offhand out of the Monster Manual, though I don't necessarily always run uh, the, the traditional alignments in that regard. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the best person to talk to about that. All right, Bobicus has got you covered here. Bobicus also says, basically he was working for the Flaming Fist. His company was assigned to liberate a town. The town was eerily deserted before the enemy ambush struck. No sooner was friend or foe struck down than they rose again, their eyes devoid of life. Only those who fled in dishonor survived. The entire town was a necromantic trap. Oh, I can see how that would uh, that would really uh, <laughs> that would leave a scar. That uh, it's easy to wear a scar on the outside where a giant flicked you and sent you flying back twenty feet. Um, but that sort of a thing, yeah, that you carry that. Ooh. Blues are the honorable dragons. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Um. Now let's come over here real quick to our monk, our strength score. Uh, so remember, we have 18, 7, 6, almost 16 feet off the ground. So now we have a monk with a strength score of 12. How tall are you? I think we said we were 2 foot 10 inches tall. We are a monk with Step of the Wind. And now we can see that while our strength is lower... Our long jump has increased because of Step of the Wind. Our high jump is 8 feet off the ground, and we can grab something 12. What happens if we were a strong monk? Boom. 
You want to talk about some supernatural monk stuff? Some, some, uh, you want to talk about some, uh, you know, like wire foo? <laughs> Look at that. Let's say that we're even, uh, we're, let's say that we're six feet tall. Six feet, zero inches. We can reach up and grab something 23 feet off the ground with a running start. Just sitting around, we can get 16 feet off the ground. <laughs> so things like that are very important, you know, or let, let's say that we have, uh, let's say that we have a wizard. We have a, a human wizard. Uh, we'll, we'll generate, uh, I don't know if Jam Jam is still in here. Generate was a male human wizard. Uh, let, let's say a dump, a dump strength, uh, score of eight, six feet tall, you know, whatever. Um, so not the, you know, you're not getting an A in PE, but that's fine. Cause you're a book nerd, right? Your long jump is four feet horizontally. You can go eh, one feet off the ground. Let's use this. Let's cast the spell jump on ourselves and see what happens. Well, well, well. Magic sir, uh, sure supplements our natural talent, doesn't it? Bink? Before? After. Before? After. <laughs> so... You can find calculators and other things like that. You can play and have fun. You can determine your encumbrance. For a lot of games, I don't know, unless... unless uh, If you're a DM and, and unless you're giving your party literal tons of loot, uh, or they're carrying around three different sets of plate mail for some reason, or things along those lines, will this stuff really matter? Eh, not in a lot of circumstances. Uh, you can always micromanage the the heck out of a game. Uh, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that if that's what everyone wants to play. But uh, have fun. See that the the world of D and D is uh, more than just what you see on your character sheet. Even more mechanics wise, even let alone just the stats and you know you fill in your personality types or a pitcher, kind of like what we've done here. Found a half-orc with a flail. That was really what I was going for. Does he have spiky armor and a dragon shield? Maybe not. But as I was looking at male half-orc fighters, I said, Oh, that's kind of fun. We'll go for that anyway. So yeah, they're a nice extra layer of D&D &D content that isn't always brought up. And you know what? If any of you DMs out there, uh, you use running and jumping rules a lot. Uh, if you do more than the standard difficult is half movement or um, whatever... Uh, please let's let's talk about it. We could bring it up and discuss different interesting circumstances. Um, and go from there. Uh, sorry, blue dragons, lawful evil. Uh, I love that. You hope your GM worked uh, out of that angle. Oh, for Bobicus, uh, yeah, uh, for the the necromantic stuff and that that kind of like uh, that internal, that mental or spiritual scarring. Tycho continues his story, but then I pulled the rope up and a bucket on it. And then we, me and another guy who got up the rope by luck on a nat 20, pulled the other two dudes up. We used the bucket as sort of a thing for them to put their foot in. Sort of how they have a loop or something on the bottom of the rope. Oh, yeah, yeah, they drop out of a rescue helicopter. I get what you're saying, Tycho. Well, I'm glad that was a strong bucket. <laughs> Even even if it's made out of sheet metal or something, uh, the bottom might have fallen through. Uh, I'm glad you're able to make it up. Bobicus continues, hasn't come up yet, but there's definitely more game ahead. Oh, okay. Instead, I've been in secret communication with my commander for the entire campaign with a sending stone. That's right. Yep, I remember you talking about that too. Or a rocky talky, if you will. That's clever, Bobicus. <laughs> I like that. Uh, hey, Dave, the dice uh, are being nice to me again. I rolled another five. Oh, um, so you're, you're talking about uh, you're making another random character bubonic, and it turned out to be a uh, it turned out to be a dragonborn. <laughs> Terrible, Bobica says Peru. Peru, where's your dagger, bro? Come on, I need you to generate that. Uh, Derek says, nicely done, Bob. You have earned my contempt in the terrible jokes. For this, you will be punished. <laughs> yeah, Rocky Taki, was, that was a really good one. It's listed on my character sheet as Sentimental Rock, in case a party member ever steals it. <laughs> that That's even like, that. that's super meta planning. <laughs> even your character sheet is a diversion from your true plans. <laughs> Very smart move, says Peru. Brilliant, some would say. <laughs> 
Derek, dang it, now I want to play this character. <laughs> you want to play the, uh, the, the Dragonborn uh, that's fighting off the bats that you're drawing, Derek? Uh, Tycho Boom, this is true, and I think the DM was just rolling bad that night. The bucket did not break. He did say the bucket got a little bent at the bottom. Still, I love my buckets and rope. No, that, that's a very clever story that you shared, and maybe that's a trick that others in here who are looking to play... Um, Th that are looking to play are willing to give a try or they can <laughs> they can spring that impromptu on their own dms to see how they handle it and uh and then go from there female black dragonborn cleric of tiamat yep you might even be able to work her into curse of strahd i mean you probably do so as a an npc a DMPC or something along those lines, but if you really want to play her, you could you could put her in there. Lots of people, pardon, random hiccups. Lots of people end up in Barovia for various reasons. Feels like a strong alternative to my Drow cleric. Both are a trickster, and I find that fascinating. One might be a little bit more practical in the tricks, right? <laughs> this is true, and I think the DM was just oh, oh, I already read that. Got it. Yep, you can find uh, fun things to do, like especially all the things you can do with a bar of soap in D and D. Um, you know, to if, to be clever, uh, you can do some fun things with soap. Mm. Stretch, Mur, yeah, swole. We're jumping. We're long jumping. We're high jumping. We have boots of str uh, striding and springing. Most useful item for me has always been manacles. Yeah, you can do a lot. You want someone to, to not get away from you. You want to uh, you want to question them for some information. What's changing there? Oh, that's right. Because with uh, second story work, you can uh, you can use your your decks if you wanted to, in order to jump rooftop to rooftop. Yeah, soap, broom closets. Yep. Uh, so if you think about a dark wolf, yeah, you encountered that I know in the in the one place in uh, in Barovia there. But a bar of soap can leave marks, like trail markings or marks on walls. You can use it to leave uh, visual clues, scented clues. Um, also, uh, your DM, if you've been out on the road for a while and you guys haven't bathed or washed your clothes. Uh, you might be at disadvantage in certain social circumstances. So having soap on hand for that is very useful. Um, Dark Wolf, uh, because uh, Ah cursed in a church, you could stick the bar of soap in her mouth and uh, tell her that she's been bad. <laughs> Pit Fiend, a.k.a. the Gaines Demon. <laughs> yeah, those, those guys are swole. Uh, chalk, yeah, chalk is also a very useful item. Um... You know, not as expensive as soap, but you can uh, soap can do something similar there too. Um, so just think of think of uncommon uses for the common items you see in the. Well, here we'll uh, we'll go to it real quick. Here's your shop. Could you as a bard or even someone else try to play an abacus as some kind of a percussion instrument? Sure, I guess. Could you break it because you want the beads to, you know, make some Home Alone style trap? Sure, why not? Propose a plan to your DM. Be creative. Be engaging with the story. Think on the fly. You know, oil to go into a lamp is also good uh, to pour out on the ground and set on fire so that you can get away. Because people usually aren't brave enough to jump through fire. Desmarsama, I once heard a player asking for invisible ink. DM asks why, he says, you'll see. <laughs> uh, later in the campaign, he draws spell runes in a prep opportunity for a combat encounter, then invoked the spell and killed most of the enemies. Ah. Well, so I, uh, I propose, or he got, like, magic spell book, uh, spell book invisible ink, or did the DM just say, look, ink is ink, I'm not going to worry about it? Dark Wolf, many of the party can go back to the shop and grab some soap. <laughs> ah, can swoon more. Uh, yes, because Periwimple really likes the pretty lady. <laughs> uh, 
Invisible ink is 50 gold, and then uh, they hand it over, giving them a lemon. <laughs> So you can see here, paper, right? You get a sheet of paper. Uh, you can, yeah, you could write messages. You could do some origami. You could fold things. If you could somehow keep it from blowing away, you can tear it and leave a little trail of, uh, you know, indicators behind you. Um, you could color it. You could do all sorts of things. All of everything you see in here, you can think of very creative uses for them outside of what you would expect to use them for. Lemon juice, when warm near a fire, reveals the scrawlings. Yeah, in, in traditional, uh, like a, in traditional uh, inks like that. Um, heck, I think they even had a mechanic for that in a Resident Evil, right? You had to like light a fire, and then uh, you got a you got a blank letter that might have had some writing, and then the warmth, uh, uh, and then the warmth made it show up, something along those lines. <laughs> yep, natural twenty paper cut. Hey. Have you ever uh, have you ever made those like those paper poppers right that you you kind of fold them in and then you can go whoop and they make like a, a big scoop like a really startling noise? Take a piece of paper and make a noisemaker, make a distraction, distract a guard, uh, try and scare someone. Um, you know, wildlife or someone who you you're getting the the the, the whatever the drop on. Um, play paper football with a halfling. I don't know. But yeah, you can come up with all kinds of things. Be a fortune teller, right? Make make one of those little like four diamond uh, fortune telling uh, devices out of paper in character, and tell fortunes. Make a little money on the side. You know, write up, route it through performance. So I can use an abacus to teach all about math and buying. Yeah, that's true. Perfume, a vial of of uh, perfume. Uh, again, you can leave a scented trail. Maybe it's a certain chemical that is flammable or not flammable or that can be left on letters or other things to mark and not just to maybe give you advantage in a social situation because you actually do smell nice and not like you've uh, been traipsing through uh, the, the woods for a week. And by the way, if anyone wants to try... Uh, if anyone wants to try Tycho's... Uh, if anyone wants to try Tycho's uh, strategy here, buckets are only five copper pieces a piece. Then again, remember, you get what you pay for. <laughs> so there you go. Lots of good stuff. There we go. All right, I am going to get up and take another break, and we'll come back and continue talking. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun. This has been an awesome night. Oh, my gosh. You all are wonderful in sharing your tips and your tricks and your stories. Um, it's, uh, it, it's so creative, and you are an amazing community uh, that I, I feel fortunate to be a part of. I know I'm the broadcaster here, uh, and I'm happy to offer this platform for you all to also speak and share your tales from the tabletop. Uh, oh, let me catch up a little bit on chat, and then I'll I'll take my AFK. It's not necessarily something unorthodox, but in my adventures, I've had to hold my breath and use some insanity mist to get out of a situation before. Also then had to save my party, jumped right back into the fight after the insanity dust was gone, and I jumped back in with drow poison-covered daggers. Say goodnight. Yeah, it's a, it's a sleepy time poison. I don't know what insanity mist is, though, Tycho. Can you clarify that? Uh, flammable perfume. Now I'm picturing Rorschach from Watchmen with the arousal can. Ah, Bobicus, I like to do that glitch where you bind, or the the aerosol uh, can. Is is that what you meant uh, instead of arousal with the aerosol can? Right. That's uh, that's something that you might be able to uh, to do as well if you if you come up with a clever way to uh, implement it. Uh, I like to do that glitch where you bind, blind jump to scroll wheel and then use a bucket to fly. You can generally steal buckets. I don't know what you're referencing, Bobicus. Neat trick with the lemon juice. I'm learning stuff here. Yeah, that uh, that really is uh, Del Corin. Uh, that was some solid advice from Derek. Um, and again, use these in your in your D and D campaign. The more you learn about sort of home chemistry, the more you learn about how spies operated in you know in modern times, let alone old. Watch uh, it, down below. There's a uh, in the on the channel front page. There's a list of links. 
especially Cody's lab, watch him. Like he does a lot of living off the grid stuff, uh, a lot of like at home chemistry things along those lines. Um, learn those tricks as a player, and then employ them in the game. Not only will you impress your DM and your friends, you can get away with a lot of stuff. But it's a it's a way to bring an extra depth. You have a really scrappy survivalist character. Watch that stuff. Watch chemistry channels. I, I there's again there are links down below to fun stuff. I don't just put it up there to I don't I don't wear glasses. I'm not pushing up my glasses to show you all how smart I am. I, I will never claim to be a smart person, but I like knowing where I can find things, and so I'll watch other smart people put on shows, um, and then I'll learn from them and I'll adapt them in a way that seemingly makes sense. So watch chemistry channels. Watch cooking channels again down below, especially the 18th century cooking channel. Um, Learn how these implements work. Learn how the tools work. Learn what they look like, because then you can have a really better idea. The Primitive Technology channel down there. Watch Primitive Technology. It's an amazing channel. It's really cool, and it, and it will give you a ton of ideas to implement as a DM or as a PC. You want to build your world and make it come alive? You want to have active characters that uh, look around them and use their resources? So you, you just don't describe, oh, you're in a forest. Suddenly you can you can say, well, what side of the uh, what side of the tree is the moss on, or what kind of trees are around? Because um, pine resin, saps, and whatnot can burn really well. You can make a torch with uh, pine resin. Hey, did you know that? Sorry, I I got on my soapbox again. Heh, <laughs> soap. And uh, <laughs> uh, Itchy says thank you for hosting and growing the community. It's my pleasure, but honestly, Itchy, I can't do it without you all. In the audience, listening, participating, you know, and, and I don't, I just don't mean participating, uh, on, on the Twitch channel. If you, if, you, if there are any lurkers here, lurk all you want, learn, enjoy, laugh, do something else in the background. Um, I know Del Corin is a horrible traitor to the channel, and he plays Skyrim while I broadcast. Can you believe that? How, how wooed? I'm just kidding. It's fine. <laughs> But if you're watching actively, you have it in the background, you're lurking, you know, you're just hearing for stuff that interests you, that's fine too. And Itchy, you know, if, if you come down to the uh, to the store again and, and you play on a Wednesday or Thursday, or even share your stories from you starting up a game in your own house, I'd love to hear that. Bring up any questions you have, concerns, oh, my players are doing this, or oh, I, I want to present a cool combat, but how do I, how do I make goblins cool in combat? This is what we'll do. I, I Hopefully I can uh, bring you all together um, continually. Uh, Tycho did not pay for those poisons. Derek says, hmm, spike greed lawful. This is going to be tricky. Uh, Del Corin, I was the first. Uh, first was how to correctly say Caesar. And uh, now how to write with invisible ink without buying ink. And uh, and as Del Corin learned, it's not, it's not pronounced Caesar. By the way, last night, you want to talk about sharing resources? Uh, Del Corn, was it you that dropped the uh, that dropped the knowledge bomb that Little Caesars was giving out free lunches on April second? Was it from eleven thirty a.m. to one p.m. whatever our local time is? Oh, Bobacus, you're referencing Skyrim speedruns. Got it. Um, can also use tea to age paper. That is absolutely correct, Dark Wolf. You want to make it look kind of crinkly, a yellowy brown. Uh, a T to age it, and then take a lighter. Like, you can rip the, the edges. Um, depending on the paper, you'll get a better look with some other over than others. But you can also take a lighter and sort of burn the edges if you want to make a, a good, old uh, an old-looking map. Uh, Tycho says, Insanity Mist just takes away Wisdom, 1d4 at first, and then 2d6 the second round. It's an inhaled poison, 15 DC. Oh, wow. You didn't pay. Oh, was that part of the stuff that you uh, got out of the out of the castle? Derek says my personal favorite was playing a convict and the research into that. Ooh, I bet yeah, you could find some good stuff. Uh, Derek, what, what did you, um, to research that, did you read any crime blogs? Did you watch, like, Scared Straight uh, programming, stuff like that? Uh, what was going through, what, what were you doing to research to get into that role? Tycho says, but your wisdom drops a certain amount. You go insane. That's literally a mechanic in the game. Yes. Um, uh, Del Corin, I, I get what you're saying, um, though, I, I, that, that's, that, that's more of a, I, that would not actually be at, at, at an advantage. Uh, Dark Wolf, TH Paper plus Lemon Juice plus Fake Magic Map you can sell. Hey, hey, there you go. 
Yeah, Delcorn is a lurker. Um, he's literally the worst. <laughs> uh, Derek says, "So you want tea? How do you know what I was? Uh, how did you know what I was playing?" Delcorn, hey, at least I'm not one of those uh, avocado members. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're not a part of the uh, the avocadonati or whatever we called them. <laughs> Bobicus glitches and tabletop RPG would be nuts. Hey, that happens, right? Your your DM forgets that the monster's in initiative and he just keeps rolling around. The monster glitched out. I I did that recently in a curse of, in Curse of Strahd, by the way. Shh. Uh, Spicy Larry has returned. Welcome, Spicy. Do you have something like? Did you just go on like a Taco Bell run or something? Did you bring something for all of us? Hopefully. Del Corin, Yep. Free lunch combo ends as exactly one. Even if you're in line, so your SOL if your transaction isn't complete by 1 p.m. All right, all of you remember that. April 2nd, 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., Little Caesars will give out a free lunch combo because of uh, things that happened in sports ball. It's a 20-ounce beverage and a deep, deep dish pizza, four squares. Dark Wolf says our TH lemon juice map to get players into the story. Yeah, you... Uh, giving handouts uh, like that, especially if you've taken the time to be kind of artsy fartsy with it, um, can really enhance the mood. Right? I wear hats here, and I've I've worn hats and used props in D and D before. Doing that kind of thing, even even if it sounds simple, can make a huge impact. It makes your game more memorable to your players and to you, and it's making the story more immersive and cohesive. It's drawing in attention so that your players don't suddenly start going like this, and uh, you know. Oh, goblins? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, they're just, you know, whatever, small little things. I don't care. They're goblins. But suddenly, you know, the map to the goblin caves is actually interesting to look at. <laughs> Uranium lulls. Derek says, no, I talked to a few ex-cons at my old job, checked out the After Prison show, and listened to those stories, and also finished a friend's tattoo when he showed me how to make a prison-style tattoo gun. Oh, See, so so Derek's really getting into you know like the the method acting, right? You know, like he's doing it. He's immersing himself. He's asking these questions of people to find out what is the life, what is the psychology, and to get into the mind uh, in that mindset, so that when he's running a character, he's doing it in an in, in authentic way. And I, I think Derek, I'm not going to poo-poo your efforts because that's really cool, and you personally enrich yourself more. Uh, though, depending on the activity level of your other players, that could be discouraging when you're bringing a convincing convict character because you talked to convicts and you did all this research and everyone else says, I'm a, I'm a half-orc barbarian. I hit stuff really hard and I get angry with rage. And then you're like, yes, you do. But why? What is, what makes you angry? Oh, well, that's just what my barbarian skills are. Yes, that is true. Why are you angry? <laughs> he just is. That, but that's what barbarians do. They get angry at stuff and they hit things harder. Uh, Spicy Larry says, I uh, I brought you all the gift of my presence. Bask in it. Spicy Larry, you better watch out because that slot is normally filled by uh, King Von Ale. And if he sees that you're sitting on the throne, um, you you two might need to uh, to have a throwdown uh, to see who, who belongs on it. <laughs> Bobicus basks lizard-like. <laughs> Delcorn, ballpoint, pen, ink, and a pocket knife, right? Uh, Tycho says, no, actually, the Insanity Mist and Drow Poison is just something I managed to steal from a random alchemist shop. I had to use one of the vials of Insanity Mist. I got three that night. But I had also found some Black Lotus Extract, uh, which does 3d6 con damage. And then, again, in a second round, DC 20. Yeah, that is, uh, poof. Yeah, that stuff puts in work. Delcorin, wait, no toothbrush handle sharpened? <laughs> Peru basks in the spicy glow. <laughs> Uh, Desmar Sama, the amount of time I spent uh, writing the Death God, my paladin is in service to. Those were the days. <laughs> Bobacus, how is this alchemist to have a down payment on a house just lying around? Was he going to be in trouble with whoever ordered that poison? Yeah, there's consequences, that sort of stuff, right? 
Uh, Derek says, not going to lie, yes, I've had those moments. That's why I'm generally cautious of the groups I play with, and I make it clear that I'm a heavy immersion RPer. Uh, Tycho Boom, I don't know, man. I have a pretty potent presence to bask in too, Larry. <laughs> I'll just find my way into a bush and to hide from King. So you're on the throne until he comes around, right? Uh, it was a great impression, so I give yourself 10 bonus EXP. All right, here, we'll, we'll do this. Uh... Oops, I accidentally gave myself a 1,000. Oh, no. It's okay. I'm still not in first place, even with that. I get what you're going for, though, Derek. <laughs> Uh, Bobicus unbasks as Tycho approaches. <laughs> Spicy, we shall bask in each other's presence, Tycho Boom. So, so you're like you're you're giving each other a, a nice uh, a nice tan. Uh, Delcorn, actually, that's uh, rarely what you use uh, for a shank. I was shocked too. Uh, Desmar Sama, in universe, my character keeps on her person the Euthurian owner's manual at all times. It's written like an owner's manual one finds in a car glove box. Um, so what is the device or whatever that the owner's manual goes to, Desmara? Uh, Ty uh, Tycho says, this is a good plan, good Sir Larry. <laughs> Dark Wolf pasks in her own presence. <laughs> and, uh, Derek, uh, I was trying to guess how to make the tattoo. I've heard of pen ink, but forgot, uh, what was commonly used for a needle or carving. Uh, Bubonic says, well, it was good till the character sheet turned out to be busted. Oh, no! How did it get busted, Bubonic? Tycho says, yeah, yeah, if you just keep sitting here, you're... Yeah, I know. I, I know, but you guys are so compelling. I'm having too much fun, but I really should get up. I don't have a hydration bot to go beep, boop, drink. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, Spicy Larry, any of you wrestling fans, just imagine two broken Matt Hardys basking in each other's broken brilliance. Uh, Ether is the death god. Oh, got it. Okay. So it's a user manual for... Yep, yeah, got it, got it, got it. All right. Uh, Tycho, cover me, quick. I'm going to go on the short rest. Mm. 